Okay, welcome back guys. So, this will be our second session. So, here uh, I would be discussing on the selection methods for the pumps in slurry and the froth pumping applications. <coughs> Uh, arrangement of a typical horizontal centrifugal type slurry pump with drive. Now, normally our focus will be on the centrifugal pumps, our focus will be on the centrifugal type slurry pumps. So, it can be horizontal, it can be vertical as well. So, let us first start with the horizontal ones. So, if you see here, this is the pump, this is the shaft on two bearings, there is the base, you have the piggy mount motor, piggy mount drive you know and it is the power transmission is from the motor through the V belt, motor pulley, V belt, pulley and then the pump shaft is the bell, bell guard. The total assembly looks like this, this is the actual thing you can see over there. Now, this one it is not mandatory that always it will be facing up, it can face this way, it can it can be at angles depending on the layout, depending on the layout. Identification of the action areas and parts of a typical centrifugal slurry pump. If you see here, you have the shaft bearings, two bearings and uh, it is a sort of cantilever impeller. This is the suction, this is the discharge point, this is the casing typical ok. And if from the slurry point of uh, input point of view, this is the eye of the impeller, this is the eye of the impeller. Now, here it goes, this is the eye of the impeller then the velocity changes in the impeller blades right, pressure is generated. So, the slurry is having higher pressure at the discharge and now it is a casing, it takes a turn and eventually goes out and shaft and the impeller is like this. The, the impeller it can be closed, open or semi open type. Now, this is the picture of a closed impeller, closed impeller means you have got the it is the back shroud of the impeller, this is the front shroud of the impeller right. In the semi open you do not have the front shroud, you have got only the back shroud and one part that has not been shown in some of the areas you have the expeller as well. Because what happens this is not so simplistic the way it has been shown over here because some slurry come do come here and creates recirculation. Similarly, on this side also there is a recirculation. To prevent that sometimes you have the expellers vents. So, they try to deflect that recirculated slurry back so that it cannot come here. But the problem with that whenever the pump is running you are fine, but the moment the pump is stopping then it does not function. So, whatever slurry etcetera there in the pipe it comes and eventually it gets out from here. So, if the that is the reason it, it can destroy the shaft. So, you have to take care of the sealing of the shaft. Now, it can be mechanical seal 100 percent which is very costly and it can be partially gland seal, partially water seal high pressure water or fully water seal ok. So, that you protect the shaft there is no leakage of the slurry and th these are the impeller vanes. The vanes are so placed so that the distance between them are sufficient for a particular sphere passage we call from the design point of view what is the spherical passage width between the vanes. So, the number of vanes whether it be 4 or 5 depends on that. Some common terminology associated with slurry pumping, impeller diameter, height, 
there is a position upward from the PCL. What is PCL? Pump center line, BEP best efficiency point, NPSH net positive suction head, TDH total dynamic head. Sometimes we, we also we call it, we do not call it total dynamic, we call it sometimes total delivery head. Total dynamic head is different. It is a difference between the discharge head and the suction head that is the dynamic head, but we talk about the total delivery head. Then you have the G V velocity and rotation and P D discharge pressure discharge flange, pressure at the suction flange and pressure of the environment that is the atmospheric pressure. So, these are the terminology which we will come across when we will be going more into the subject right. How many of you have red pumps? How many of you have uh, operated with the pumps? You have operated the pumps? Yes. Good. So, that means if I take a total cross section, either, either somebody has operated it or somebody has read but not operated. So, everybody is acquainted with the pump. If I if I assume that, will it be right or wrong? Right? Good. The first thing an important terminology we call specific speed. Why specific speed? What does it signify? Specific speed for identifying pump impeller vane and the casing type. So, what is specific speed? N s equal to the pump speed, pump flow rate at the BEP, I am coming to BEP, at the BEP and total total dynamic head at BEP to the power 0 0.75. If you do this, then that gives you the specific speed. So, the specific speed signifies what sort of what, what would be the shape of the impeller. Normally, it is a it is actually a benchmark that if, if you have a specific speed of this order, then the more or less the impeller shape would be something like that or if I have to maintain the impeller something like that, the specific speed range should be in this other way. You can see here radial vane, then Francis makes flow axial flow, higher it is it is moving like this. Okay. <coughs> for slurry application, casing profile changes from quasi spiral to concentric for N s greater than 150 to reduce the radial load F r on the casing. There is a hydrodynamic load on the casing because when the slurry is being pumped that means impeller does some work on the on the slurry fluid. Impeller does some work. So, in that process the total energy of that slurry is more than at the suction level. So, when that slurry leaves from the impeller vane outlet, vane pocket outlet, then the immediate action point is the casing wall right. So, it develops some sort of radial pressure on that and again if we go back to the earlier slide, look at this one. You have there is some pressure here and there will be some pressure due to the recirculation, but all these pressures will not be same. So, there will be an axial pressure difference which will be acting on that shaft right and there will be a red you see here it is getting out it, it is the always the backward curve it is not never forward curve right. So, the RPM the movement is like this. So, it it is getting out hitting this one getting out hitting this one then this pressure profile is generated over it. So, this this part of the this part of the casing is vulnerable against the radial load ok. So, what are the types of the casings that we have? We have volute casing, quasi volute and we can have the concentric casing 
or here we said a quasi spiral that is a quasi volute. We have the volute quasi spiral that is quasi volute and you have the concentric. Concentric is this where the uh, specific speed is very high then you use this one because the radial load will be so high that volute casing it will be very difficult to sustain. Economic design would not be feasible, but if it is less than 80 you do a quasi spiral that means it is a partly volute not full, but if it, is, if it is less than if it is less than 20 and all you can do the volute casing. Radial load will not be that much. You can see here how the radial load varies, how the efficiency varies you see this is the best efficiency point. The important point of this is that this radial load is here at the BEP, BEP level, but it is not mandatory that pump would be operating at BEP. Now, what is best efficiency point? Anybody has got any idea what is BEP? Now, sorry? Pump works ideally. This is a very generalized statement. Can you further explain or further expand it? Least, uh, least tendency to fail. Sorry? Least tendency to fail near BEP. BEP is the, is the point where the hydrodynamic load on the impeller and the casing are minimum. So, you will have the minimum vibration because you know you have the shaft which is cantilever right. So, there is a chance of vibration, there is a chance of deflection, deflection of the shaft will be minimum, vibration is minimum, noise is minimum. So, hydraulic efficiency is the maximum there. So, that is why it is known as best efficiency point B E P, best efficiency point. It is very important for uh, the pump because every pump has to have a best B E P and when you will be buying it you must ensure that the vendor declares where is the BEP because without knowing where the location of BEP is if you find the operation point then may not be the good operation point because you got to know where the operation point and where the BEP how far or how close it is with the BEP. To understand pumping the first basic thing is the affinity law, this is the very very basics. Now, affinity laws for estimation of hydraulic performance of geometrically similar centrifugal pumps at different operating conditions. Have you, have you ever seen this expression anywhere? In the chemical engineering part you should have seen it. Have you seen this expression? If you, if you normally look at the pump this thing they will tell you about this that Q is proportional to N when D is constant, Q is H is proportional to N square when D is constant and power P is proportional to N cube, but I am not interested because I am not interested with the speed alone I got to see the effect of the impeller die as well. So, if we take I do not want to make anything constant I say both varies then what happens Q is proportional to N D cube H is proportional to N square D square P is proportional to N cube D to the power 5. Now, the chemical engineers N cube D to the power 5 into rho divided by something is known as a power number right. So, this is the important affinity law why it is required to establish the pump performance do you mean to say when you get a pump characteristic curve what is pump characteristic curve the behavior of the pump that is the, the flow versus the head flow versus the head that that is called the pump characteristics at a particular rpm. Now, if it is to be established for various rpm various speeds then how many experiments do you need to conduct is it possible no people normally do 3 4 experiments then comes this one 
they establish with the help of affinity laws and that is how the pump characteristic curves are generated. So, this is very very important very vital and I have used one very important thing similar geometrically similar if you are comparing some different impeller this law will not hold good has to be geometrically similar you can upgrade upscale it identical geometry, but ratio everywhere it has to have the same ratio. So, geometrically similar pumps then yes it is valid otherwise no. Now, Q is the centrifugal pump discharged H total dynamic head developed by the centrifugal pump uh, or you can say total delivery head as well it is a head. P is the brake power of the centrifugal pump kilowatt n is the rotational speed of the centrifugal pump impeller d is the diameter of the centrifugal pump impeller above affinity laws can be used to estimate the power drafts of the same machine for handling slurries with two different densities but having identical solid characteristics in the following way now if i consider that okay there is a pump which is handling water the similar pump has to handle the slurry so what is the thing that will be different there it's a density right. So, you have got this one here also, here also it, it, it could have been rho 1 and rho, rho is 1 for the water. So, it will be rho, uh, rho slurry and this by the whole thing is known as the power number. again very basic thing this is a sump this is a pump this is the pump center line PCL we have we have read PCL right. This is the height of the liquid above the pump center line in the sump and, and this is the total height of the liquid or, or, the, or the total height of the pipe system where the where the slurry would be pushed to velocity v and this is the suction velocity this is the discharge velocity this is known as this is known as static head this is known as the static head h stat static head that means what is static head it is the difference in the height of the final destination point from the pump center and the pump center line and the pump center line that is the static head. Now, the question is Z d why I am telling Z d because the static discharge head. Now, Z s you have got some other head available. Now, ideally people may say that well why you are telling me to pump this much I have got this much of head available. So, I can subtract this Z d my uh, Z s from Z d. So, then my head goes down. So, uh, it will be easier for me to select the pump which will be economical. Can I do it or should it be done? Logically yes, mathematically yes because you have a head available over here. You have very marginal losses here right. So, why should you take all the way through Z d? It should be Z d minus Z s which is the z static head can we do that question or should we do that sorry you have a head over here my question is from this point to that point you need to take the study up so that is your study head the so why i'm at all discussing this thing zd so, that means, I am not giving any cognizance to that mathematically I should give cognizance to that, but I am not giving why uh, you are close to that there is something called cavitation that we will be discussing. So, this is a safety head we should not touch it even 
unless it is very big tank. And in fact, this level, it is a very schematic diagram. This level, normally when you have got a sump or any tank and it is fitted with the instrument, you have got the high level and the low level, right. So, never ever consider the high level. So, low level should be the design point. Low level should be the design point, never ever consider the high level. High level will always give you a rosy picture. If somebody considers that, he will be definitely landing into trouble. Another important thing, probably many of you have, how many of you have studied Bernoulli's theorem? Bernoulli's theorem? Bulk of most of you. Definitely, yeah. So, P by gamma plus V square by 2G plus Z plus losses is constant. This is the Bernoulli. So, at any point of the root of the liquid flow through the close, close conduit, where P is the pressure of the following uh, flowing liquid, at that point V is the velocity, at the reference point gamma is the specific weight of the liquid, Z is the height difference between any datum level and the center line of the conduit. If center line of the conduit is taken as the datum level, then Z is 0. If I fix that pipe center line as my datum reference level, then Z becomes 0. Now, applying the above law between the slurry top level at the sump and the pump suction with datum as the pump center line, then we get the following. We are applying, go back to the earlier slide. We are applying it here and there. Okay. So you have got PI by gamma plus Z. That is at the, that is at the suction point. At the suction point. Let me once again go back. This point. In fact, this is the point where, where we are considering and this point. So, you have got P at by gamma plus Z equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g plus H f plus 0. P at by gamma is the atmospheric pressure, pressure head and P s by gamma is the pump suction head, right. V s is the velocity of the slurry in the suction pipeline, g is acceleration due to gravity, z is the height difference between the slurry top level in the sump and the pump center line, h f is the frictional head loss of the fluid in the suction pipe consisting of straight pipe, valves and fittings. So, whenever you are talking about any friction loss, it is not only the pipe, apart from pipe you have got the pipe fittings elbows, bends, tees, right and the different types of valves. So, for that also you got to take the friction loss. Then if I substitute that, then it becomes P at by gamma plus Z minus this minus H f, this is the suction head at the pump, right. Now, if P vapor be the saturation vapor pressure head of the carrier liquid, then P s by gamma minus P vapor should be greater than 0 to avoid to avoid formation of the cavitation. So, P s by gamma minus P vapor should be greater than 0 to prevent bubble formation and entry to the impeller. This is the necessary condition. Now, P s by gamma minus P vapor, it is known as the available net positive suction head. Available net positive suction head NPSH A, right. For safe operation of the pump, NPSH A should be greater than some NPSH we call NPSH R, where NPSH R is the net positive suction head requirement for the pump against the operation of the particular diameter of the selected pump impeller at a particular speed. So, NPSH R also 
is not a is, is not a fixed parameter it varies with the pump impeller the pump speed but npsh available has to be more than npsh r this is also an important parameter uh, is it is it clear to everybody these are the very basic things is it clear to everybody if anybody has got any doubt please ask me now available npsh calculation how do you calculate the vapor pressure uh, this thing your uh, p vapor because it varies with the temperature then it it varies with the altitude also because the pump here in dhanbad or in kharagpur may do well but the same pump if placed at chile in the andes mountain in some of the copper mines may cavitate may cavitate so you see here the head of this is the head right and with the with the altitude the head is decreasing this is the air pressure in head of water at different heights this is expressed in head of water so air pressure in terms of the head of water one you see at 10 zero altitude that is msl it is it is 10 10 point something is 1.013 bar right so it is 10 10 point something now it is dropping down like this if you go to 3000 meter and chile and all they are even 5000 meter places and the vapor pressure in meter it also varies with the temperature okay so first you, you need to calculate the vapor pressure and from that vapor pressure you will do the correction meter of water calculate from here meter of water do the correction here for temperature now npsh npsh a is the air pressure at the location plus low level in the sump you, are, you see i am maintain mentioning this word low level in the sump not the high level low level in the sump minus vapor pressure of water minus pipe friction losses npsh a is available net positive suction head at pump inlet all terminology and the way to combat this one is there okay again coming back to bernoulli bernoulli's theorem is the main tool in determination of npsh a and the system head requirement for pumping now <coughs> applying the theorem between the pump center line and the final discharge point we get the following P O by gamma equal to V D square by two G plus H F plus P D by gamma plus H S. P O by gamma is the total delivery head of the pump, right? V D discharge velocity, H F frictional head loss in pipe and fittings during the transportation. P D by gamma. There is an, another additional term. It is the liquid pressure head required at the discharge point. This value is only greater than zero for cyclone application. because if you don't have a cyclone you can put zero here you don't need any pressure but if you have got a cyclone they will say 63 kpa then you got to calculate it in terms of the meter of water head right so that is the pd by gamma so uh, what i am telling pd by gamma is the liquid pressure head required at the discharge point this value is only greater than zero for cyclone feeding application otherwise you can ignore it hs is a height difference between the final discharge point and the pump center line pcl this is also known as the static discharge head of the pump to be selected i am not taking the difference 
Theoretically, NPSH A minus NPSH R is the additional head available with the pump while computing the TDH. So, the above equation can be modified. This is the additional head, you have the additional head, right? Because suppose the pump has this is positive, so NPSH A minus NPSH R is the additional head available. So, you can knock off that additional head from the total head requirement. Because this is the head you are having, right? So, mathematically, this is the correct statement, but application wise, this is not correct. Mathematically, there is nothing wrong here, this is the correct statement. NPSH A minus NPSH R is some head value which is available with you in addition. So, I can discount it if required. Mathematically, there is no dispute, but practically, no application wise no. As the NPSH R value gets often increased over the initial value during the total service life of the pump due to the reduction of the diameter due to wear and tear of the impeller and operation of the impeller at a variable speed, this differential NPSH should never be used in computing the TDH of the pump. Check it out, do not ever use it because you never know. Today, this is appearing rosy. But tomorrow with a change in the pump diameter because of the wear and tear impeller diameter, this will shoot up, difference will be narrower, narrower, narrower. So, do not take anything from here, leave it for the better operation of the pump. Is it clear? Now, very important thing which is known as the NPSHR, we have been discussing that there is a minimum NPSH which is required for pumping, right? For the pump, for the pump, otherwise it will start cavitating. What is that? Now, how do we define it? Normally, it is a tested value every pump manufacturer they will have to do and they will have to find out this point by doing a testing it is called 3, 3 percent head drop test 3 percent head drop test. Now, what happens? It is a small test rig you have got a sump, you have got a suction valve, you have got a pump and the pump delivery line is again fed back to the sump right. So, now you are opening you have you have opened the full thing what you call the full uh, suction valve. So, your flow rate is full now you, there is a delivery valve at the after the pump discharge. So, you are throttling it slightly then you are also throttling that the pump inlet. The moment you throttle the because if you do not throttle then whatever is the NPSH available that is fixed constant for that set of application that is constant because everything is a full pipe flow that is it is a full pipe flow it is a constant thing there is no change over there, but then how to find out. So, the total NPSH is fixed and the total head you know the system head total head that the pump is generating. So, total head you can do by taking the difference between the discharge pressure and the suction pressure. Okay. Now, by changing or by throttling what you are doing, you are increasing the frictional resistance in the in inlet line, right. So, by doing this, by tweaking this against a particular flow rate, you will find that the, the total head that is the difference between the suction and uh, your uh, delivery and the suction head that is initially shooting up then going down. So, the moment it reaches 3 percent of the initially established head. So, you just note down that Q okay, and that head that NPSH because if you are throttling that means, what is happening the resistance increasing and the NPC, NPSH A also is changing. So, you just note that NPSH where you have got a head drop of 3 percent. 
So, that is known as NPSHR, NPSHR right. So, now the, now the question comes how many experiments a pump manufacturer has to conduct to establish the whole set of NPSHR curves for all range of his pumps? Not many, not many. Why? Is the, is the NPSHR concept is ok? Is it ok? Have you understood? It is a bit tricky that is why I am asking you have you understood NPSHR? You have not understood. Arrangement is like this, you have got a sump, you have got a su suction valve, you have got a pump, you have got a delivery valve, you have got pressure gauge here, pressure gauge there. So, why? Because P D minus P S divided by gamma is the H, is it correct? That is the total head. It is, it is doing. <coughs> now, uh, against a pH and against a full this thing, full open condition from here to there, you have got an NPSH A, you have got an NPSH A, which is constant for the system, unless you twig with this, unless you twig with this, right. So, now if you twig with this that means, if you throttle it then what happens you are increasing the resistance of the system. If you are increasing the resistance of the system NPSH is getting down right NPSH A is coming down ok. And you are also opening the when you are doing this one throttling this one you are also opening the, the, that valve. So, you are trying to maintain Q all very close, but you are your this thing is increasing what do you call the resistance is increasing that means, you are changing the H s that is P s by gamma and in P s h also. Now, look at this thing total head is constant and N P s h is constant right. So, ideally this is the total head this is P d minus P s by gamma total head and this is NPSH available. This is constant. So, you should get a line like this, you should get a line like this ok. But what is happening as you are throttling this at some point of time you are changing subtly the NPSH A ok and Q is also getting changed right little bit and H s is getting affected that is suction head. So, by tweaking this one there will be a some point where you will find that this is showing some up and then it is coming down. So, when 
this point, this difference is 3% of that head, that fixed head, right? That head should be fixed, but actually what is happening? Because you are, you are changing, you are changing this one, what you are changing? You are changing the, you are lowering the PS, that means PD minus PS is increasing. Do you see an increase? Right? Then a drop. Because then what is happening? NPCH has also decreased. So, cavitation has set in. So, when the cavitation has set in, this is the point. Cavitation has set in at this point. We call it an incipient cavitation point, but that is not very much perceptible. When it is 1 percent cavitation, that, that also pump can tolerate but 3 percent has been the earmarked cavitation. We give cognizance to this one that yes, here cavitation has set in. That means, <coughs> there is a particular flow against which this has happened. There is a particular flow against this, this has happened. So, we that flow and that head we registered. So, that means, against that particular flow this is the NPSHR against that particular flow, right? Understood now? Any particular reason why uh, only 3 percent of that is taken? So that, is, that is the International Institute of Hydraulics, they have, they have made that as a standard. That is why I said there are 3 points, one is the incipient cavitation, but we do not give cognizance to that, there is a 1 percent cavitation. People may ask why not at 1 percent, but they said 3 percent is the area where the pump will have the real danger. Now, if you see here, how can you understand? So, one is the one is the real from the real measurement of the head, head drop and second is the sound. When the pump is sucking the fluid, it is going up and then there is a particular sound in the pipe. The moment the cavitation sets in, the sound increases, you can see here, sorry. You can see here, this is the noise in the suction life. So, it goes up to that point. Okay? That is the second identification, that cavitation has really set in. Now, people have tried to make a relationship with the NPSHR, because we, have, we know the specific speed, right? We have already noted that one, specific speed of the pump. Now, there is another term, suction specific speed. In the specific speed, there has been another term added, which is known as the suction specific speed. And in place of H, we are putting NPSH to the power 0 point, in place of h, this is NPSH r, okay, whatever you have seen. Okay. So, suction specific speed can be computed from one experiment. Now, this is a very interesting to note that suction specific speed for a pump will not change, right. It is a dimensionless parameter, it will not change for that type of pump. So, once you have established a suction specific speed and then you know, then you know the flow rate and speed, you can find out the NPCHR for any other speeds. So, you need not to do the complete range of testing, maybe one or two tests, then determination of the suction specific speed, then computing the NPCHR from there, right. Now, he, here is a some area of pump operation, this is the danger area, this is the moder moderately danger area and this is the safe area. 
So, up to the suction specific speed value of 5000 if you can see here this this green area and here is the specific speed. So, lower lower the values these values would be lower also 500 5000. So, we, go, we got to also see that where our pump suction specific speeds are because this is this is required for benchmarking. It should not so happen that we design we select a pump whose uh, NS falls in this area which is a non preferred area and this is the extremely this is the rejected area danger area right. What is sigma? Sorry? Sigma. sigma is known as a, a parameter uh, it is called the Thomas cavitation parameter sigma Thoma. So, it is nothing but NPSH by total head it is called NPSH by total head that is known as sigma Thoma, Thomas cavitation parameter. Now, what happens? You can see what happens out of the cavitation life picture because the bubbles are forming in the low pressure zone and they are bursting at a high pressure range releasing air you see what happens pitting see, and this is a continuously cyclic process one after the other one after the other these are the failures these are the re region of cavitation you see here bubble collapse bubble forming and bubble collapsing. So, anybody has got any anything to ask on this? Any questions up to that? If you allow gas, <coughs> because that is the thing we will be dealing with. The question is, gentleman has put a put in a question that suppose there is a pump which is using liquid, but somebody now wants to use a liquid plus gas phase through it. What will happen to the pump? <coughs> what will happen to the pump there can be many things we will we will discuss it when we will be dealing with the froth pump because froth pump is a two phase froth pump is a two phase because froth bubbles when they collapse they release air so the entire phenomena happens within the pump but without the cavitation we, we will discuss that <coughs> 